Welcome to Monday is Fun Day. This is our first week. We're going to have a story, maybe two, and a craft. And today's theme is dragons. Do you believe in dragons? Well, the character in this book does. This is called There's No Such Thing as a Dragon. It's written and illustrated by Jack Kent, and it's published by Golden Book. Now, Billy Bixby was rather surprised when he woke up one morning and found a dragon in his room. It was a small dragon, about the size of a kitten. The dragon wagged its tail happily when Billy patted his head. Billy went downstairs to tell his mother. There's no such thing as a dragon, said Billy's mother. And she said it like she meant it. Billy went back to his room and began to dress. The dragon came close to Billy and wagged its tail, but Billy didn't pat it. If there is no such thing as a tr something, well, it's silly to pat it on the head. Billy washed his face and hands and went down to breakfast. The dragon went along. It was bigger now, about the size of a dog. Billy sat down at the table. The dragon sat on the table. This is the sort of thing that's not usually permitted, but there wasn't much Billy's mother could do about it. She'd already said that there was no such thing as a dragon, and if there's no such thing, well, you can't tell it to get down from the table. Mother made some pancakes for Billy, but the dragon ate them all. Mother made some more, but the dragon ate those too. Mother kept making pancakes until well, she ran out of batter. Billy only got one of them, but he said that was all he really wanted anyway. Billy went upstairs to brush his teeth. Mother started clearing the table. The dragon, who was quite as big as Mother by this time, made himself comfortable in the, on the hall rug, and he went to sleep. And by the time Billy came back downstairs, the dragon had grown so much he filled the hall. Billy had to go around by way of the living room to get where his mother was. I didn't know dragons grew so fast, said Billy. Do you know what his mother said? There's no such thing as a dragon, she said firmly. Cleaning downstairs took mother all morning what would the dragon in the way and having to climb in and out of windows to get from room to room. And by noon, well, the dragon filled the house. Its head hung out the front door and its tail hung out the back and there wasn't room in the house. There was no room in the house that didn't have some part of the dragon in it. And when the dragon awoke from his nap, he was hungry. A bakery truck went by and the mm, smell of fresh bread was more than the dragon could resist. The dragon ran down the street after the bakery truck and the house went right along, of course, like a shell on a snail. The mailman was just coming up the path with some mail for the Bixby's when their house, well, rushed right past him and headed down the street. He chased the Bixby's house for a few blocks, but he couldn't catch it. And when Mr. Bixby came home for lunch, well, the first thing he noticed was that the house was gone. Luckily, one of the neighbors was able to tell him which way it went. Mr. Bixby got in his car and went looking for the house. He studied all the houses as he drove along, and finally, finally he saw one that looked familiar. Billy and Mrs. Bixby were waving at him from the upstairs window. Mr. Bixby climbed over the dragon's head onto the porch roof and through the upstairs window. How did this happen? Mr. Bixby asked. It was the dragon, said Billy. There's no such thing, Mother started to say. There is a dragon, Billy insisted, a very big dragon. And Billy patted the dragon on the head. <clears throat> well, the dragon wagged its tail happily and then even faster than it had grown, that dragon started to get smaller. And soon, it was kitten size again. I don't mind dragons this size, said Mother. 
Why did it have to grow so big? I'm not sure, said Billy, but I think it just wanted to be noticed. And that's, there's no such thing as a dragon. Well, I think it's time for the craft now. So I'm gonna stop and get us all ready. So are you ready to make a dragon to go along with our stories? We're gonna make one today using a toilet paper tube. I bet you have them. So let's see what else you might need for this. You're gonna need a toilet paper tube. You need either some paint and a paintbrush, or you can just have a piece of paper about, oh, maybe four and a quarter inches long by five and a half inches the other way. You can have some tape. You may need that. We'll need some Google Eyes. Some extra green paper or whatever color dragon you want to have. We have no idea what color dragons were, so just some scrap paper color for his eyes, the backs of his eyes for his ears, for his nostrils, then some white paper. Probably want some scissors and some glue, either a liquid glue, a glue stick, and you may even want to have a Sharpie marker. And you're gonna need some tissue paper. And if you don't have tissue paper at home, you could probably use just any kind of paper. What this is gonna be is the fire coming out of his mouth. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get your toilet paper tube ready. Now, if you're painting it, um, put something down. I've got a plastic bag here that I'm using so I won't mess up my table. I've poured my paint into the lid of a some kind of container. It might be like a Pringles container. And then I have my brush. And I'm just going to very carefully paint it. And I can stick my fingers right in the end so that I can hold it that way. And when you get it done on one side, you can set it down, stick your fingers in the other end so that you can paint all the way to the other edge. This is just green acrylic paint that I got at the craft store. Dries pretty quickly. And I'm using a big brush so it goes fast. And the only downside of painting it is, of course, you have to wait for it to dry. So I'm going to set that one aside and show you the other option, which is to take a piece of paper. And as I said, it can be any color. If you only have white, you can color it to draw your scales or whatever. But then you take a toilet paper tube and you're going to wrap it all the way around. Now I find it's just as easy to take a piece of tape and tape that right on there so it's the in, that's going to be on the inside so it's not even going to show. If it goes too far, you can just tuck it on the inside but then just wrap your paper around it. And then you can either use a glue stick or liquid glue to glue that down or you can tape it again. It really doesn't matter. I think just for the ease of today's project, I'm just going to tape it back down. So now that's all covered. This one is almost dry, but I think I'm gonna keep on working with this one. So with the extra green that we have, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna take a piece and fold it. And then I'm gonna trace around my thumb. So first I'm gonna just cut that off of there. And then kind of trace around my thumb because that's what I'm gonna to use to mount my eyeballs on. Doesn't have to be perfect, but just so that you can kind of see it like that. And the reason I fold it in half is I can cut out once and I'll have two that are exactly the same size. Just like that. Then I'll take my glue stick and I'm just gonna 
glue one of those Google eyes on each one right up near the top. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to fold it back like that. Can you see that? And then I'll put my glue on there and glue it onto the tube. And sometimes, because the tube is rounded a bit, it doesn't hurt to cut a little notch right in the middle of the back like that. And then you can fold it in just a little so that it will curve onto that toilet paper tube as you're putting it on. It sticks a little better that way. Just hold it there for a second while it sets in. And if you find that it's not setting, you can always take a piece of tape to glue it on, but that's what it's doing. And then of course you'll do the same thing with the other one. Fold it back. If you want, take a little snip in it, put the glue on, and stick it on your dragon. Looks more like a crocodile right now, but crocodiles don't breathe fire. And as I said, if it's not sticking real well, you can put a little tape right there on both sides. Now he also needs nostrils. And I've actually got some left over here. So I'm just going to cut another little piece, similar to the other one, but not quite as big. Kind of like that. Fold it back on itself again. And before I stick it on, I'm just going to take my uh, marker and just draw a nostril on each one. Now I've seen some of these uh, toilet paper tube dragons, they use pom-poms to mount the eyes and the nose. I didn't have any pom-poms, so I'm just making do with paper, but you can experiment with whatever you might have at home. So there are our nostrils, and once again, I'll just put a little glue on it. and stick it on towards the front. Still looks like a crocodile, doesn't he? If you want, with the one that I made, I gave him some ears and some horns. So you could do that too. But you still have paper left over. So I think I'll make some ears. And I'm just kind of freehand cutting these. Again, fold it. This time, because it's going to go on the inside, I'm going to glue on the inside of the fold. Let's stick that back here. Oop. I think I may put some tape on that one. a little more dragony and then with the white I can help make some horns that look like a horn make two of those Then, all he needs is his fire. And to make the fire, all you're going to need, as I said, is some tissue paper. And cut a strip, oh, not quite an inch wide. I may even cut two. I'm not sure how much I need. Okay. 
and I obviously don't want it that big, so I think I'm going to cut this in maybe thirds. So maybe about oh, six inches each. If you want, you can use your ruler to measure it. It doesn't have to be exact. And you can use different colors. I've seen some where they mix red and orange and yellow, but since I only had red, we're going to go with red. And then, so for your last step, you're going to want to glue around the inside of his mouth. And as I said, you can use a liquid glue or you can use your glue stick. Sometimes it's hard to get the glue stick inside there, but I'll try it this way anyway. It just needs to be on the inside edge. Don't know if you can see that. And then take your strip of tissue paper and just stick it inside and keep going around. They can overlap. Wants to stick to me more than the inside. And that's really all there is to it. Lost one of his horns, so let me stick a little tape on that. Okay, so there's our dragon. He blows fire. So that's our craft. Well, I think we have time for another book. This one is called The Dragon and the Nimblesome Knight. It's by Eli Woolard and Benji Davies, published by Godwin Books. I wonder what that word means, nimblesome. Maybe we'll find out by reading. It's a rhyming book. Now, the dragons of dread were a terrible bunch. They ate boys for their breakfast and girls for their lunch. But their best things of all, oh, their favorite delights, were dribblesome, nibblesome, knobble kneed knights. When the smallest of dragons turned four, his parents said, Dram, you're a baby no more. This nest's getting cramped, and you've never once flown. Now go bite a nibblesome knight of your own. So Dram stretched his wings and he started to flap. But lightning went flash and the thunder went clap. It hailed and it galed and the winds looped and curled and they whisked Dram away to the end of the world where he thumped and he bumped and went bounce, clatter, crash. And oh, he fell in a lake with a Fountainous splash. Now watching the skies <clears throat> by the edge of the shore was young James who'd not seen a dragon before. And he cried, what was that? It's some rare kind of duck. It seems to be hurt. What to do? Oh, what bad luck. So he took off his armor and said with a grin, I'm coming to help you. And he waded right in. A lad, muttered Dram. Oh, well, he might taste all right, though my mom said I must nab a nibblesome knight. And he stretched out a claw and then suddenly stopped. Oh, his leg was all bent and his paw simply flopped. Oh, ducky, cried James. Why, you poor injured thing. Sit yourself down and I'll make you a sling. That's better, thought Dram. Now I must find a bite of a dribblesome, nibblesome, knobble kneed knight. So he waved goodbye and he tried to breathe smoke, but all that came out was some kind of horse croak. <coughs> oh, ducky, cried James as Dram struggled to roar. What a strange sort of quack. Why, your throat must be sore. Come to the woods and I'll fetch you some honey. It's good medicine. 
soothing, and runny. That's better, thought Dram. Now I must find a bite of a dribblesome, nibblesome, nobbled need night. So he waved goodbye and he started to fly, but oh, his wings were too weak to take off in the sky. Oh, Ducky, cried James. I'm so terribly rude. Why, you must feel quite faint. Let me get you some food. Come to the orchard and we'll soon fill our tums full of pears and pink peaches and big purple plums. That's better, yawned Dram. Now I must find a bite. But he fell fast asleep in the moon marbled night. Now in the morning, Dram woke and said, hey, I feel fine. Soon a bite of a nibblesome night will be mine. And he bellowed out billions of billowing flames. Then he thought, I'll say bye to that little lad, James. So he strode down the road and he stomped through the field. And there was young James with a sword and a shield. You're you're a knight, shouted Dram. You're not simply a lad. You're a dragon, yelled James. You're all beastly and bad. Yes, muttered Dram. I suppose I should bite. Oh, mumbled James. Then I guess I should fight. It must be all over, the finish. The end. Then they both said at once, but I can't. You're my friend. My friend, chortled James as he put down his sword. My friend, shouted Dram, and he smiled as he roared. The knights all said, dragons? Why, they're simply not beasts. And the dragon said, knights aren't so nice for our feasts. Nibble at nights? Why, of course we do not, though every so often they sort of forgot. So I guess knights and dragons can get along. Well, those are our stories for today. I hope you'll enjoy your dragon. Does he breathe fire? I hope I'll see you next week when we have another Monday is Fun Day, some other story or two, and a craft. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.